Thermodynamic Equilibrium by Dorothy Ann Chapter 1 Harry sat up with a start, rubbing his eyes as the vestiges of a nightmare faded into nothing in his mind. He gasped faintly in the quiet, dark room, fighting to slow his breath so he didn't wake his dorm mates. He no longer woke up screaming. He had trained himself out of it somehow hating the worried expressions Molly would give him when he stayed the summer there, hating the awkward, helpless, you all right, mate, from Ron, hating the hugs and talks from Hermione. Harry pushed his blankets back and slipped out of the dorm he shared with Ron and Neville, making his way to the common room. The cold air was a balm on his overheated skin, cooling the sweat soaked through the back of his T-shirt until he felt like he could breathe again. Since the last battle, Harry constantly felt like he was overheating. It was as if coming back from the dead had put his body into overdrive. He was hungrier, ate more, and his skin was always too warm. And sometimes he had dreams of being a phoenix, bursting into flames with heat and fire prickling under his skin, making him something new and yet still the same. The healers had said there was nothing wrong with him, and nothing they could do except teach him stronger cooling charms and send him on his way. Harry stopped short at the doorway. Someone was sitting in the common room. They were by the fire, which had been stoked high, filling the room with a flickering yellow light, but very little warmth. The eighth years had been moved to the third floor corridor for the year, and the heating charms weren't repaired during the rebuilding. They were weak at best, and non-existent at worst, which was most of the time. Harry thought it was Ron or Ginny for a second, but once his eyes focused, he realised it was just the reflection of the fire off the white blonde hair. Draco had pushed one end of the sofa right in front of the fireplace, and sat on the edge of the plush violet cushion, with his hands so close to the fire it had to hurt. He stared at the fire blankly, looking through the flames without seeing them, occasional shivers racking his body. Deep shadows of exhaustion ringed his eyes, just as they had every day since they'd come back to school. Harry sat down on the other side of the couch. Draco's whole body flinched, his hand going for his wand until he saw who it was, and hesitated. Sorry, Harry said. Draco glared half-heartedly at Harry, his hands wending together in his lap. Merlin Potter, can't you just go to sleep like a normal person? I sleep, Harry said, pushing up his glasses to rub at his eyes. Draco snorted. When? he said acidly. Between nightmares, Harry said, irritably pulling off his glasses and wiping off the smudges that he had just made with the edges of his t-shirt. When do you sleep, Draco? Draco frowned at the Draco, but Harry refused to use anything that had to do with their stupid childhood feud. Around three or four if I'm lucky, Draco said, with surprising honesty. Harry nodded and sighed. Yeah. He glanced at the fire, but found his eyes drawn back to Draco, he was staring at him, his brows slowly drawing together. Harry raised his eyebrows in a silent question. Why aren't you freezing your ass off? Draco asked, waving an annoyed hand at him. Harry looked down at his thin t-shirt and sleep pants and shrugged. Draco was wearing a matching green flannel sleep shirt and pants, wrapped up in a robe that was so fluffy it looked like a fur coat, with slippers to match and yet was still trembling faintly from the cold. Draco frowned furiously at his non-answer, so Harry reached out a hand. When Draco stared at it, Harry waved impatiently. The stubborn shit glared at him like it was a trick. Harry moved over, sitting right next to Draco and grabbing his wrist. Draco flinched, his eyes widening. Are you ill? Harry shook his head. No, it's always like this. Draco's skin was thin, smooth, and cold. 
It was as if he'd been standing out in the snow. Harry could feel the heat leaching off his hand, cooling it. It felt really nice. Harry blinked slowly, his eyes getting caught, like they wanted to pull him into sleep. But the lingering heat remained, making him want to pull his clothes off or run outside and go flying. He'd done that once before, and it ended up sick. It wasn't a good idea. Stripping naked probably wasn't either. Draco could have been petrified he was so still, sitting on the edge of the couch. Harry chewed his bottom lip, and then quickly shifted over until he was half behind Draco, wrapping his arms around him and leaned against Draco's back. He could feel Draco twitch, and then go very still, his breathing quick and short like a rabbit's. Harry expected Draco to shove him and run off. For a handful of ten seconds, it seemed like he would, but then his breathing slowed, and Draco slowly eased back against Harry's chest until all his weight rested against him. His robe was just as soft as it looked. Harry kept expecting to feel the heat from Draco's back, for it to grow until it became uncomfortable, and Harry would have to let go. But it didn't. You are far too warm for a normal human being, Draco said his voice so tight it was almost strangled. Harry leaned back into the couch, pulling Draco with him. Since when have I ever been normal? he asked, closing his eyes. There was a beat of silence, and then he could feel, more than hear, Draco laughing against him. Harry smiled against the fluffy robe, squeezing his arms around Draco's sides. He felt Draco slide his hands on top of Harry's, Cold skin meeting hot. Harry spread his fingers so Draco's could slide between them, and sighed at the cool slide of his skin. There was a long pause. I just want to sleep, Draco said faintly. Harry hummed absent-mindedly. He could feel the heat leeching off him, until the coldness of the room could almost touch him. Right as it seemed like Harry would get cold, he started to feel the faint warmth of Draco's body rising, balancing his own. He could feel Draco breathing, the faint echo of Draco's heartbeat through his back. He felt more relaxed and at ease than he had in months. Harry's head fell back against the plush cushions of the couch, and he murmured, and sleep. Just keep moving. So long as Draco kept moving, he was fine, completely normal, just like he used to be. When he stopped, sitting in class, meals, staring blankly at the canopy of his bed and pretending he would fall asleep soon, the cold crept into him, starting in his feet and fingers, slowly creeping up his arms and legs with the cold sinking in like shoots of ice. Pansy and Blaze suggested he see a healer, as if he had never thought of that himself. A healer couldn't help him. Too much exposure to Crucio damaged you. Draco felt lucky he'd only ended up with poor circulation, rather than permanent nerve damage or a mind driven to madness. Draco gave up on sleep when the warmth had leached out of his mountain of blankets, and his feet started to ache. He wrapped a blanket around his shoulders and shuffled into the common room, lighting the fire with a flick of his wand and directing few logs onto the grate. He stretched his hands and feet towards the grate, as close as he dared to, until they prickled painfully with needles of warmth that couldn't penetrate deep enough to warm his bones. He looked over at the sound of approaching footsteps. You're late, Draco said. Potter ruffled a hand through his hair with a sheepish grin. Ron wanted to chat. Draco humped faintly, watching as Potter sat in the middle of the couch, dropping the pillow he'd bought with him at the end and laying back with a yawn. Draco pulled his feet into the couch, bracing his back on the couch arm. Potter's eyes sleepily blinked open and glanced down at him, moving his feet until they covered the tops of Draco's. He sighed and smiled faintly. Draco shivered as Potter's permanent fever soaked through his sock. 
People weren't supposed to be so warm, but Potter was. It felt like he was burning up inside. Potter's feet felt warm for the first time since, well, the night before. Draco leaned forward and pressed his hands over the top of Potter's feet. Why are you so warm? He asked absently, for about the tenth time. Why are you so cold? Potter asked back, like he always did, his eyes closed. And here, Draco would snipe something about being winter, and Potter being the freak, and so, so many excuses. And he was so, so tired. Crucio, Draco said softly. He didn't think Potter would pity him, but he couldn't bring himself to look at him. So he told the back of the couch. The Dark Lord just liked to punish someone when his plans went wrong. And Aunt Bella, well, I was there. I was always there. The couch creaked faintly as Potter sat up grabbing Draco's hands. When Draco looked up, Potter grinned and flopped back onto his pillow, dragging Potter with him. Draco yelped in surprise, half catching himself, half sprawling over Potter's chest. Potter let go of his hands and laughed. Draco glared at him and pinched his arm. Ow! You git! Potter yelped, jerking his hand away. You're lucky I didn't knee you in the groin. Draco grumbled. He gave Potter one more glare before dropping his cheek on Potter's chest. He could feel Potter chuckle. He'd summoned Draco's blanket and tossed it over them. Draco shivered faintly as the blanket warmed his back and began catching Potter's heat. Potter linked his hands together over Draco's back, right between his shoulder blades. Draco could feel Potter's thumb absentmindedly moving up and down his back. I died. Potter said quietly. Draco looked up at him in surprise. Potter stared at the ceiling. In the Battle of Hogwarts, I really did die when Riddle hit me with the killing curse, then... He squeezed his hands and Draco felt the pressure around his body like a hug. Potter's heart was pounding. I came back. Draco let his fingers curl around Potter's shoulders. His faded t-shirt was as soft as lamb's wool. Potter sighed and looked down at Draco with a lopsided smile. Ever since then, I've been too warm. Hmm, Draco said absently, his cheeks feeling inexplicably flushed. He pressed his cheek back against Potter's. He could feel Draco's breath against his hair. What the hell are we supposed to talk about now? Draco said irritably. You started it, Potter said with a laugh. Draco humped into Potter's shirt. Besides, Potter went on, I'm sure we'll think of something. You've been sleeping better. Hmm? Harry said vaguely, looking up from his textbook at Hermione. She rolled her eyes. You've been sleeping better. Hermione repeated, tapping the corner of her eye. The circles under your eyes are gone, and you don't nap in class, well, as much. Yeah, Harry said, tugging at his tie loose and unbuttoning the top two buttons of his shirt. He didn't really wear a robe anymore. But, Hermione pointed her quill at his face, Ron says you're not usually in bed in the morning, and sometimes at night. That leads me to believe your sleep solution is somewhere. Or someone else. Hermione blinked blankly at her. I've been sleeping in the common room. On a couch, he added. Hermione's brow furrowed. A couch? A couch is more comfortable than your bed? Well, it's colder, and, Harry joked, there's a lot less snoring. Hermione glanced around the common room's stone walls. It is cold in here. That helps with your overheating problem. My overheating problem? Harry laughed. You make it sound like a disease not fit for polite company. You aren't fit for polite company, Potter, in case it has escaped your notice, Draco said, with a faint sneer as he strode past them, heading for the door. 
Harry laughed. He was fairly impressed how Draco somehow managed to look poised while wearing three jumpers, along with a heavy woolen robe. Harry closed his books and pushed them away, and Draco paused. Harry felt inexplicably pleased and quickly asked, Where are you going so late? The library. There's a book I need before Pins leaves, Draco said. He took a step, then hesitated again. Harry quickly pushed his chair back and stepped through the maze of chairs to reach Draco. For the charms assignment? I've been having trouble with that too. He held his breath, mostly expecting Draco to refuse him, or even ridicule him. But he only glanced at Hermione with a flicker of anxiety, before heading out into the hallway with Harry at his heel. Harry gave Hermione a brief wave as he left, ignoring the puzzled look on her face. They walked side by side in silence. Curfew was close, and along with the cold, not many people were prone to linger, so the hallways were empty. Are you actually having trouble with the charms assignment, or just looking for an excuse to harass me? Draco asked as they turned the corner. Harry looked over and smiled. Draco had pulled his hands into the sleeves of his jumper and was clutching them tightly to his chest. Harry shrugged. It's tricky, all the little variations. I wish someone had warned me that so many high-level charms are intensely specific alterations of the basic charms you learn first off. Draco smiled very faintly, glancing over at Harry. I've mastered 16 different light and illumination charms so far. 16? Harry groaned. I've only found eight. Draco chuckled. You can borrow Miss Olga's household charms for every occasion once we get back. I've finished with it for now. He leaned his face down, his hair fluttering around his eyes as he huffed on the tips of his fingers. His cheeks and the tip of his nose were flushed pink by the chill. Harry reached out, taking Draco by the arm and pulling him closer. Don't manhandle me, Draco muttered, nonetheless allowing Harry to take his arm and free the hand from his sweater. Harry laced his fingers with Draco's. They were so cold they could have been carved out of marble. He stopped walking and rubbed Draco's fingers between both of his hands, until some warmth came back into him. The library is going to close soon. Draco said a little sourly, his brows firing with irritation. Harry gestured for Draco to give him the other hand. Hurry up then. Draco shoved his hand in Harry's face, glowering at Harry's collar. Why do you even bother with a tie if you're not going to wear it properly? He muttered. Harry grinned, pressing Draco's hands together between his own. I was wearing it properly. I just got warm and had to loosen it. Draco rolls his eyes. Are you even wearing a tie under all those jumpers? Harry asked. Of course I am, Draco said, affronted at the very notion. I'm not some sort of hooligan. Harry burst out laughing. Draco leaned against his shoulder with a chuckle of his own. Harry led the way to the library, holding one of Draco's hands tightly, wrapping the other around his forearm. This is ridiculous, Draco sighed. I feel like I should have a bonnet and a bustle. I could let go, Harry offered, loosening his grip. Draco tightened his. Don't be stupid. All right, Harry grinned. What book are you getting anyway? Miss Olga's Charms for Seasonal Celebrations. And before you ask, yes, you may borrow it after, Draco said. Harry pressed a little closer against Draco. Thanks. Draco licked his lips and twitched his wand slightly more to the left as he performed the fairy light charm. A small orb of green light pulled at the end. Once it was the size he wanted, about as big as a grape, he made a minute circle with the tip of his wand and traced a small U away from the green light, his wand tailing a strand of silver, then the charm incantation and movement, central and down. A blue light, a little darker than a Lumos, began to form. His brow furrowed as he concentrated, making sure the lights would all be the same size and shape, connecting them with silver threads of light. He followed the blue light with a yellow, then red and purple. 
He was in the middle of making an orange light when a loud knock from the door to his rooms broke his concentration. Draco frowned at the end of his wand, where a light ought to have been, and instead was nothing. The rest of the fairy lights were stable, though, and glowed prettily against the sheets. What do you want, Potter? Blazed asked coolly. Well, um, I was looking for Draco, Potter asked as eloquently as always. Draco pushed himself up to the top of his bed, pulling the blankets down just enough to peek out. Potter rubbed the back of his neck sheepishly, looking nervous. Blaze was sitting forward defensively on the edge of his vision. Can't you leave off, Potter? Haven't you anyone else to harass? Draco saw Potter's brow furrow, and he interrupted before the conversation could become an argument. It's fine. They both turned to look at him. You hear about the book? Draco asked. Potter nodded. Draco sighed. Come in then. He held up the edge of the blanket. Take off your shoes and don't stretch the opening too much or it will break off the space. Potter leaned over, peering into the blankets. Oh, a wizarding space? In blankets? Draco frowned at him. What? Didn't you ever build a blanket fort growing up? Potter shrugged, kicking off his shoes and sitting on Draco's pillow. What the fuck? Blaze said faintly. I promised to lend Potter a book for class, Draco said, as he scooted down the small tent-sized space. I won't be long, Potter told Blaze. He slipped his feet through, wiggling down until he was even with Draco. So this is how wizards build a blanket fort? Draco raised an eyebrow. How else would you do it? With a lot more blankets, usually, Draco said. Draco looked around critically. My mother is particularly good at temporary extension charms. It's just that the bigger you make them, the more likely they are to collapse. And there's no reason to make it bigger since it would only lose heat faster and... I like it, Potter said, and smiled at him. Draco smiled faintly back, and turned to the book he'd left by the side of his pillow. I've been practicing the fairy light charms. Potter shifted on his back and looked up at all the different fairy lights Draco had strung across the ceiling of the small space. Wow, he said, reaching up and brushing his fingers through the blue light. He turned his head to ask Draco, how do you keep them all the same size? Their faces were mere inches apart. Draco could see flecks of brown in the green of Potter's eyes. His eyelashes were very long. Draco? Potter asked, a smile curling up on his lips. Draco took a deep breath, tearing his eyes away. I'm cold. Oh, Potter said. Well, move over. He pulled his arm up, wrapping it around Draco's shoulders and pulling him closer. Draco rested his head on Potter's shoulder and took out his wand. I shall show you how to keep the size consistent. Pay attention, it's all in the wrist. No. Hermione. Harry laughed. Hermione shook her head. Absolutely not. I don't. No. She stomped ahead of them. It's not that bad, is it? Ron said, trying to catch up to her. Harry getting a better mark than us. You. It's bound to happen one of these days, right? Just odds. Hermione stopped in her tracks. This is just like six year potions. It's nothing like sixth-year potions, Harry said with a sigh. You had help, Hermione said, pointing an accusing finger at him. Harry rolled his eyes. Yeah, but not like sixth-year. He flipped open his bag and took out the two Miss Olga Charms books he had planned to return before dinner, and held them out. See? Just regular library books. Hermione snatched them out of his hands. You used these? Why didn't you share them? I was borrowing them myself, Harry said. I need to look at these, Hermione said, already opening the first book. I was going to return them before dinner, Harry protested. Hermione nodded absently, walking into the common room as she read. I'll just have a look and take them back myself. Hermione, Ron groaned. 
I thought we were going to have, you know, like quality time now that the big exam's done. Heating charms? Uh-huh, Miney said absently, dropping onto a couch by the fire. We can read it together then. Ron groaned, shotting Harry a beluged look and sat on the couch next to her. Heating charms, Seamus snapped from the other side of the fireplace. Everyone's contributing. Come on. Hermione took her wand out and cast a wordless heating charm over the room. Ron quickly followed suit. Harry cast one as well, over by the fire where it wouldn't settle on him too much. All the furniture in the room had been pushed into a tight ring around the blazing fireplace, so anyone would have to step over armrests to go in or out. That didn't stop what seemed like every atheist student gathering, clustering together in the crowded mess. The largest sofa had been left by the window, apparently too heavy to bother moving. Outside snow was falling in tiny crystals, sparking when the light from inside hit them. Harry pulled the latest Quidditch monthly out of his bag and laid back on the large couch, enjoying the cold radiated from the tall windows. He was deep into the article about the viability of the new horseshoe feint in Quidditch matches when he heard someone stomping down the hallway from their dorms. It was a very familiar stomp. A smile crept onto Harry's face as Draco stopped next to him. Harry glanced over his magazine. Draco was wearing a jumper and had a blanket as well as a comforter draped around his shoulders, but was still shivering. For a second, they just looked at each other and then Draco glowered at him. He kicked Harry's leg out of the way so that he could get on, bracing his arm on the back of the sofa and shoving Harry's magazine out of the way so that he could collapse onto Harry unimpeded. Harry laughed in surprise, half-heartedly smacking Draco with his magazine. Draco grumbled something into Harry's chest, pulling his blankets over his head and wiggling around to pull the blankets tighter around himself. Harry propped his magazine on Draco's back, absent-mindedly tangling their legs together. Harry? Ron called, his voice strangled. Harry looked over at his best friends and found the whole room leaning over the backs of their chairs to stare at him. I fucking told you, Blaze hissed to Pansy. Pansy responded with a faint whimper. Ron's whole face had gone so pale, his freckles stood out like ink spots. Um, Harry, Hermione said quietly, her voice carrying in the dead silence. Uh, are you dating Malfoy? Harry blinked, his heart rate picking up. He pulled up the edge of Draco's blanket. Are we dating? He asked. Draco huffed in annoyance turning his head to prop his chin on Harry's chest. His fine blonde hair clung to his cheek in a loose, staticky mess, and Harry found himself carefully trying to tuck it neatly back behind his ear. Draco's hands pressed against Harry's chest as he leaned forward and kissed him with lips that seemed unfairly soft. He slowly pulled back, searching Harry's expression, and then smiled faintly. I suppose we are he said quietly, and pulled blankets back over himself. Harry looked over at Hermione. Looks that way, he said, with a brilliant smile, curling an arm over Draco's back before picking up his magazine. Thermodynamic Equilibrium by Dorothy Anne Chapter 2 An Epilogue of Sorts I'm dying, Harry muttered. You're not. Harry turned his head to glare at Draco, who was lying, not in the shade like a sane human being, but fully clothed in the sun. Draco grinned at him. You don't understand, Harry groaned. He had already stripped off his shirt, and he'd get yelled by at least three people if he took off his trousers. I do, you ass. I'm literally dying, Harry went on. I'm cooking in my own skin. 
I'm a broiler, a toaster oven, a campfire. Draco laughed, looking far too amused. The sun is trying to kill me, Harry said. We could go back to your room in the dungeons, Draco said. The one I helped you get so this wouldn't happen. Harry pushed himself up on his elbows and looked out over the lawns. Hermione was reading under a tree with Ron's head in her lap, and Ginny and Luna were making flower crowns with the Patel twins and Pansy. Dean and Seamus were trying to teach Blaze and Theo how to play football, their robes teeped into makeshift goals on the grass. Harry had wanted to spend some time with his friends. They'd finally finished their exams and could relax, but instead of having fun, he was miserable. He actually missed the dank, miserable, blessedly cool dungeons. Draco laughed again. All right, toaster oven. He stood up, shrugged off his robes and shoes. What are you doing? Harry asked, sitting up. Draco pulled off his socks, loosening his tie and pulling it over his head, dropping it on top of the pile. He held his hand out, and Harry let himself be pulled up. Let's go swimming, Draco said. Really? Harry said, already kicking off his tennis shoes before Draco changed his mind. Draco raised an eyebrow. Obviously, he gestured at himself. Harry grinned with childlike glee, pulling Draco down to the shore of the Black Lake. He charged into the cold water and got up to his knees before he had to stop, as Draco gripped his hand so hard it hurt with a yelp of dismay as the water washed over his feet. C cold Draco said, jerking back. Yeah, Harry said, letting himself be pulled out of the water. That's the point, isn't it? I didn't think it would be that cold, Draco said in dismay. It just turned summer, Harry said. He loosened his grip. Here, I'll go in for a bit and you can enjoy the sun. Draco bit his lip, staying on shore as Harry walked out into the water, just up to his shoulders. He took off his glasses and dunked his head under, sighing with relief when he came up, pushing his hair back and putting his glasses back on his nose. He had hardly heard the splashes before his arms were full of a Draco Malfoy, clinging to his shoulders, gasping from the cold. Harry pulled Draco close. What? Have you lost your mind? No, Draco said fiercely, and then instantly changed his mind as he began to shiver. M maybe Harry grinned, ducking down and wrapping his arms under Draco's ass, lifting him halfway up out of the water as he gasped and clung on even tighter. Harry, now who's lost their mind? Draco said. Me, Harry said, but I'm in good company. Draco thumped his shoulder lightly. You had better not drop me. Never, Harry promised. Liar, Draco said, trying not to smile. I'll try not to, Harry said. That's... Draco smacked him again. You're supposed to lie. Harry laughed. All right, all right. I'll never drop you then. Fine, Draco said, mollified. His button-up shirt clung to him, coloured pink where it stuck to his skin, well suited to his pout and the damp ends of his hair, wet by his reckless splashing. What? Draco asked, his expression softening as Harry studied him. Move in with me, Harry asked. Draco's breath caught. You want to live together? Harry nodded. Draco bit a slip, fighting down a smile. As if you could be rid of me. I have absolutely no interest in being cold ever again. Harry smiled in a blossom of relief and happiness. I'll never let you get cold again. Well, you're doing a terrible job of it, Draco teased. And as if his words reminded him of the cold water, a shiver shuddered through him. Harry tightened his grip and carried Draco back towards the shore letting him down when the water was only knee-deep. "'What are you idiots doing?' Pansy called down to them. "'Cooling off?' Harry said, 
Freezing to death, Draco shouted back, walking back onto the shore. Try me off, Pence? Pansy rolled her eyes and cast a drying and warming charm on him, leaving Draco looking rumpled and windswept. Draco irritably patted his hair down and turned back towards the lake, hands on his hips. Coming out of the water any time soon? Harry shrugged. Eventually. Draco tried to look irritated, but only managed something between bemused and fond. Jesus, just get married already. Pansy said in faux disgust. There's no rush, Draco said, looking only at Harry. We have to live together for a while first. Harry smiled, his heart squeezing so hard it seemed too big for his chest. Yeah, 